So previously, we have created uh, backup images, uh, we and then we restored them or deployed them. Uh, there were uh, we used these two solutions. Um, we used the server. We made a computer server and installed the clients. And clients send all the backups. Uh, created those images on the server and then we could we were able to use the restore CD that required a USB stick uh, to restore the images this one is sorry yeah this one is was over the network that uh, we used a software clone deploy but for to use that we uh, needed to create an image first like uh, from a good PC that's running uh, we could dip, uh, back up the the image and then uh, we did not need the USB CD also USB stick we could just simply go to uh, connect the computer over the network uh, the blank computer and use the network pixie boot uh, pre-execution environment to install the windows but what if we don't have an image we want to install an operating system over the network and all we have is the installation media a file like an ISO or a CD so how to do that uh, today so the scenario is that we don't want to deploy an image which has um, all not only Windows installed but all the other softwares as well we just want to install an operating system over the network uh, to a computer blank computer and then configure the once we have the Operating operating system install, then we can go and do all of our things. So it's just a one on one, like it's just one computer that we have to configure. For that, and yeah, interestingly, for example, uh, and we have to work with different operating system. It, we have Linux operating system, uh, we have uh, Windows and different flavors, and we want to choose. Uh, okay, this machine it's one time installation we have to install windows 7 the other machine we have to install ubuntu and then the third machine we have to install windows 10 or fourth machine we have to install windows server so for that uh, i found a great software i mentioned that uh, in one of my previous videos it's called serva so if we can go uh, to the <coughs> it's this one uh, it's it's a very neat software basically it turns any computer into a powerful server uh, like it can be a tftp server ftp http dhcp dns so <coughs> we're gonna use we will be using tftp and dhcp for that first launch our windows 10 machine i was uh, i did play with it before making this video uh, on server I tried installing it but it fails uh, because the server is uh, supposed to act like a server itself so we it will not and there was some interference with DHCP um, sharing and then a little digging told me that it's WDS as well that is Windows deployment service <coughs> so I'm gonna try on Windows 10 over here and see if I'm able to uh, it's um, install it it's still a trial and error video because uh, i have to install it over here i last night i was installing on server it did not work uh, so let's do it let's see if i can connect to this machine I love this virtual machines it gives me like I don't have to go and have a few physical machines I can quickly create them delete them it's a blessing so we're gonna log in as a local user
and click on this link <coughs> go to download and click on this one community I think this one is the paid one uh, the community is just uh, if we on you have to wait seven seconds so let's go to this all you have to do is just unzip it and this is it you have to you can copy drag it to your desktop for easy access or you can leave it here all you have to do is run it you see it's you have to wait seven seconds you accept it so you have to click here on this top left corner for the settings and click on settings so we're not going to use all of them we need only tftp so tftp is trivial a file transfer protocol basically it's for networking that the host or clients uh, sorry the clients they can copy or uh, access a file read a file from the host <coughs> we're gonna turn this tftp server on and we're gonna turn this option on which basically binds the um, thing to this address so when the uh, computer goes the client computer goes online and search for it uh, it goes to this uh, um, IP address when it and it can find the TFTP installed here and then we can give it a server root directory so for the root we're gonna go here go to your C drive local C and create a folder any folder you can name it anything I'm gonna name it uh, server root because it's asking me the root so let's name it <coughs> underscore root we copy the address sorry we go in this one copy the address and we go back to this and so for example if you make a mistake you do this and you try to go to DHCP it will say directory does not exist so basically that's a good check that first you have to create the folder then you click uh, the right name and you, we know that we have created when you click it it takes it checks it and accepts it saves it so <coughs> about the DHCP this is very important um, since uh, you saw uh, on TFTP I'm getting this address 192 that means that uh, my router is assigning addresses 192.168 is normally associated with your home network and this can, I was able to fix the uh, networking issues um, I'm gonna create another video Mm, to get the IP addresses from the router the home network so this is very important right here the DHCP tab since I'm using the my home router to assign IP addresses uh, so I need to do it proxy DHCP but had I had been using the other option where these computers are not uh, getting their IP addresses from my router but they were getting from the server then I could make this the DHCP server I would click here and then I will obviously uh, in both option I'm gonna do this whether I'm using this or this I need this one just like TFTP but then <coughs> if I'm using this one you see it automatically deselects then I have to set the pool size you can put 50 60 100 pool first address first address is this machine address we could use this one or any address boot file is the gets automatically once you click here you have to click on this one as well so it creates the boot file this is the link subnet mask that I have to go to CMD and oh that's uh, in case uh, that's subnet mass I get from CMD if this I'm making this one as a DHCP server so I can run it and get the subnet mass 255.255.255.0 and I get the router address that is 192.168.1.1 
and leave these two just like it and when I run the um, uh, client uh, it gets the IP address that whatever I mention here that will be uh, first address like whatever I put here if I put 149 that is the first address that that client will get but uh, I'm not making this DHCP server I'm simply making it the proxy because my router is assigning IP addresses so that makes your life very easier you don't have to do anything and that's all just click OK you're done it will ask the server it does not save it asks you to close this uh, and restart and that's how it uh, um, saves and execute them so for execution just go and run it again you have to again wait for these seven seconds <coughs> and watch one watch what happens when I click this and the screen appears and it's gonna run commands its command so each time when it's running you have to wait for this line maintenance procedure ends so that's when you know that you can go and make more changes so this one is right here done what what is the next step and the next step is to go to your root server root right here so you see we may we had just created this server root there was we did not create any folder when it ran it created all these folders and if you know nwpx pixie this is the one that's uh, right here oh sorry this is the one that is uh, this one bm dot sorry uh, this is the one here bm microsoft pxc server and that's its boot a boot file you see the bias here so server root so <coughs> these three folders they are very important this is the uh, boot file and all that good stuff this nwa.pxe this is for all your linux distribution distros to be stored in so you create a folder here for example ubuntu and you put ubuntu files in it there i don't have ubuntu do i let me check so go to this is my main host computer uh and if i have ubuntu it should be here pro right there yeah so i uh, actually i can put uh, ubuntu there uh let's do that this is a torrent file I don't know why it's there but let's see you mount it you copy paste everything copy and over here you create a new folder called ubun ubuntu you paste it in there <coughs> you have to wait for the copy paste so uh, use uh, if you see that we can copy from our uh, host machine the actual physical machine into this virtual machine thanks to uh, if you're using the option to bind your virtual switch to your actual switch uh, actual machine switch so basically uh, we can send the data and copy paste If I image Windows 10 now, <laughs> this machine is going to have a lot of data. So I should remember never to uh, image it again. All right. So my Ubuntu is in there. The next folder is WIA RIS. So this one is pre windows 7 operating system so in this one you can create a folder for windows xp windows vista windows 2000 windows millennium windows <coughs> um, 
98 second edition 98 95 all that um, ancient stuff you can create a folder here or base actually I copied it just before making this video so can I move it to that one let's say RIS yeah simply move it here <coughs> says time all right and for this one WDS this uh, it says Windows deployment service this is the cool one so we're gonna make a new folder we can call it um, W10 and if you remember we had um, <coughs> Windows 10 uh, we got the 90 days evaluation version so we can go to our downloads and it should be this one I believe grind normal yep so let's do this copy everything just like before and simply paste it here <coughs> The reason I'm doing all this is to show you where all the operating system go in terms of these folders and then I am actually hoping to see all of them listed when we go and run our virtual machine um, from pixie boot and then I'm thinking to um, I have the laptop that I installed Ubuntu on I want, I want to boot it in um, pixie over the network and <coughs> see if I can install operating system onto that one so Windows 10 is giving me one hour and five minutes remaining <coughs> that's a lot of time So you see this is this method you can basically on a computer put everything all the operating system and then you don't have to carry all the CDs or USB and then jiggling through them and inserting here and there to do if you're in an office building and you have to work with a few computers over the same network you can simply boot them from pixie and install whatever operating system you want so it's just it depends scenario to scenario what scenario you have what devices you have to work with and what is the installation media you have you have some uh, you have all or you have neither so at the end of the day you want to get the job done and it's testing our patience right you know all, what I fearing is all this hard work and at the end I don't get the desired result uh, <laughs> that will be painful uh, then you have to go and troubleshoot it and make it work sometimes trial and error is not fun all right so everything is done um, I don't have all the operating system in there I just uh, copied one each to make sure uh, what I wanted so I really wanted to try the XP so I'm gonna go with one this option so basically or I can yeah let's do with all of them you have to uh, share these folders 
you, what you have to do is you, all these three folders you have to share it like this you right click on the one you go to properties you click sharing uh, you don't click share you click advance you click share this folder and you share it with the name underscore sorry um, underscore share you click on permissions and you give everyone accept apply okay close you do the same for this your properties sharing advance share this folder you name it underscore share you click permission for everyone apply low okay apply okay close you do the same for this last one sharing advanced <coughs> share click on permissions for everyone allow okay okay close you're done so it's let's uh, so you had all you had to do was share you cancel this out and now you have to close it just like before and then run it one last time I hope because if it goes into that uh, what I had to suffer last night uh, and I lost that video uh, uh, actually I was making that video but uh, at the end I clicked the wrong option and it was gone all right so you get the maintenance procedure end and this is okay this doesn't mean oh okay it says okay last night I was getting that error uh, unable to get the share SMB something like that that was on the server uh, but I lost that video because I clicked the wrong option let's do this one so we as mentioned we always have to wait for this line so watch what happens this log will change once we run the XP machine I named it Windows XP because I wanted to install Windows XP on it and I was working with server so I never deleted this one I kept it uh, let's connect to this one this should automatically go to uh, pixie boot and in my previous videos you see right there and you see uh, all right right there so surprisingly it's giving me Windows XP option and it's giving me Windows 10 but it is not giving me Ubuntu option I need to it will be a trial and error video to go find out why Ubuntu is not working but so far I'm very happy that I got at least all the windows and I will find out uh, why why or how to make uh, Ubuntu option appear here but for the sake of this video let's not focus on that and try to install either one of them uh, but if you I want to show something here when it says this this was the last time we had DHCP discover it offered the it automatically picked the machines address you see it's 192.168 it never offered DHCP request from IP so that's I'm um, 719 if you go to your Hyper-V and you go to the settings and you click on this probably 719 right there so this machine yeah, basically what happened war is that since we were running D proxy where is it right there it at this line it did not ask it for the It did not actually offer an IP or assigned an IP it sent a DHCP, DHCP request for this uh, against this uh, um, MAC address and it got the IP address 
and once it got the IP address you see this is 148 that's our this machine IP address so that's how the pixie client and all that they work together and this machine having this uh, connected with they both connected and it got these options we're gonna go with Windows let's go with Windows XP and you see it start changing over there status setup cannot continue press any key to exit all right that was a failure but we did get the option let's see if we can install Windows 10 oh yes loading files so basically that Windows copy is uh, corrupted uh, something wrong with that one I need to fix that but so far uh, we are able to get at least one Windows uh, working <coughs> So the rest of the procedure is the same when we install Windows and all that. I'm not going to go with that one and bore you with the whole installation. But you see that it's uh, loading network resources. Let's see connect because I don't have a password over there. Our error. Okay. The main user. okay that's something new let's go to settings sign system log there's nothing for the user domain slash user we don't have a domain there and let's see for the find the user let's go to the root and in root uh, WDS server readme and what's the username it has user defined head directory which user define username password the W must be shared as share when you see it right here it says oh okay i think it should be win 10 slash and let's see So basically, that's your okay. So basically, that was the local machine username and password. We got through it, so now it's just like same. We have to go through with it, and <coughs> uh, we can continue the installation. But I don't want to. The reason is that I have so many Windows 10 machines. I was hoping for Windows XP machine. I named it Windows XP. Uh, but this is the process uh, I showed it uh, the username password that it was asking was of the local machine uh, user any user that has the access to that machine uh, and can read and write files because we shared that that's what all it was asking let's go exit it out and I'm gonna end this video here I'm gonna do a little bit digging to make Windows XP work and if it works I will make a video Alright, thank you for watching and you have a good night.